are these people? So, all right. So our first story tonight, um, didn't want to make this Gaza heavy as, as I said earlier, beginning to get Gaza fatigue. Uh, just feeling that all that's all there is if it's not mainstream news. Yeah. Um, this is you are fake news. Mainstream news. Um, but uh, this is from friend to the show in our head, Kaylin Johnstone, who usually always writes great great articles calling out the establishment and uh and i think in light of all the major stories especially around harris over the past week uh i felt this was kind of fitting uh to kind of talk about i know indy also wrote a substack article on this issue that he in this, featured on yeah. hardlands uh, well I think. not in this segment but he did talk about it on hardlands today so shout out to Kit and Daniel uh, for hosting Indy yep. um, to share his Substack article. Um, so that being said, Caitlin wrote this article, I believe, on Monday, where she writes, "No one would vote for any of these, any of this bullshit, without extensive manipulation." It is a well-documented fact that under the Western Empire, not only are your political systems aggressively manipulated by the rich and powerful for the benefit of the rich and powerful, but public opinion is as well. Insane systems which rely on ex exploitation, injustice, is that, yeah, ecocide, militarism, and more are actively normalized by a mass-scale psychological manipulation. So Caitlin continues. One of the biggest lies we're sold in Western politics is that election results paint an accurate picture of what the public truly wants. We are told that candidates who promote peace and economic justice lose elections because their platforms are unpopular with the wider public, as though the people are organically coming into worldviews which support poverty, inequity, war, and militarism all on their own. Socialism isn't just as unpopular, we are told as though we don't live under a capitalist empire that has spent generations violently stomping out socialism wherever it pops up and brainwashing the public into despising socialism at home. Americans just don't care that much about foreign policy, we're told, as though Americans aren't being propagandized to the gills every day of their lives into seeing their government's bloodthirsty warmongering as normal as, and acceptable. It is a well-documented fact that under the Western Empire, not only are our political systems aggressively manipulated by the rich and powerful for the benefit of the rich and powerful, but public opinion is as well. Insane systems which rely on exploitation, injustice, ecocide, militarism, and war are actively normalized by a mass-scale psychological manipulation, and then we, and we are then presented with candidates and platforms which support those systems and told that anything else is fringe commie extremism. Yep. If left to their own devices, nobody would organically come to the conclusion that they should be people living on the streets while investment properties are left empty, that normal people should be working two jobs to feed and house their families, while Machiavellian pl plutocrats amass billions of dollars, that we should be destroying the ecosystem we depend on for survival to increase profits for corporate shareholders, or that we should be encircling the planet with war machinery to terrorize and murder any population on Earth who disappears, disobeys and, and the dictates of Washington. But that's what our elections serve us year after year, decade after decade, because no part of this is organic. So now we're seeing a U.S. election where two tyrannical capitalist moorongers are squaring off against each other, appealing to the votes of America's two mainstream political factions which are only mainstream because vast fortunes have been poured into propaganda manipulations to make them mainstream. Then you got candidates like Jill Stein saying normal, sane, and common sense things about peace and justice while being framed as an extremist lunatic by the consent manufacturers of the mainstream press. And when Stein loses in this aggressively manipulated information environment within yeah. this aggressively manipulated electoral system, it will be framed as evidence that her politics were seen as too fringe and kooky for the mainstream public. 
even though they're like bare minimum. Like yes, yeah. and and we and we've said this before. And yep. look, I and and I'm speaking for myself. I know you think slightly differently. If you feel compelled to vote for Jill Stein, go at it. However, for me, and I probably can speak for Indy and Reef as well. Yeah, we're I just the personally above. believe that really the reality is Jill Stein is not running to be president. She is running to get 5% um, funding. She's running to get 5% funding. Yeah. So, and we've made this argument that given and what we've seen, and it's funny because I said this on Twitter today, it's so funny how the Democratic Party can seemingly, because there's always an issue with Republicans seemingly, well, always, you know, bend the knee and come together for shit that they want, and the Democrats are kind of do 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 whatever. Well, somehow or other, they got their act together and got behind Kamala Harris without any problems. But... They can't come together over progressive issues that we need, like abortion, uh, minimum minimum wage increase, or living wage would be even better, like universal health care. Somehow, we had dissension in the, in, within the party uh, over those things, but they all can come together, at least seemingly so, for the sake of... Uh, pushing in Kamala Harris mm -hmm. for us that people are already kind of like, yay queen, slay queen, girl boss, all that bullshit. Unity. So, but going back to Jill Stein for a second, she will have to play the dance. She will have to do all these things or at least work within progressive policies within a duopoly that is not going to allow her anything. So... So that's the that's the thing that I have said and I know others have said that is not necessarily talked about. It's the idea for her is, okay, if you get this 5% funding, what's the guarantee that the duopoly is going to give that to you? Yeah. And then even in the miracle that you... I, and I've only, heard, I've only heard one set of numbers on that, like what they actually get, which is nothing. It's very right. small amount of money. That they will be mismanaged. Do you know how much? If you look at the greens, I, I forget offhand, but it's like something like a hundred million, maybe. If I don't even think it's that. This is nothing. This is chicken change. Really. I, please don't take me as um, like accurate on that. But I've only seen one person no, even but say if that. If anyone knows, let us know in the chat. Yeah. But but even. Even if that's the case, as you, I said, like, what's the guarantee that that money will be given to the Green well, Party? If anything, and the Greens have not been great them to court. on that. And then, right. Yeah, um, I can imagine duopoly taking them to court first. There's, over there's plenty of people who feel like so, that electoral system is rigged. So, you know, and we've yes. talked to many of those candidates. <clears throat> so, hate to tell you. But voting um, ain't it, fam. Sorry. Right. Um, right. So, I mean, that being said, if you choose to vote for a party, go ahead. You have the right to do so. But I think we at INM pretty much are team one of the above because we believe that the whole system needs to be destroyed in order for any anything to happen on the benefit of the poor, essentially. And that's not going to happen within the current system that we have but you know that's just our thing that doesn't necessarily have to be you yeah um even with that i will say if there are ballot initiatives in your state definitely vote for that that, that because... i think is useful but please do look into them don't just read the headline right. and and check mark like some of that stuff is not what you think it right. is they deliberately right. worded I know to savvy. be pretty terrible I know oh. Savvy, shout out to her. She's going to go. She typically does uh, ballot initiatives in every state. And I think she's going to be starting that soon, if not already. 
So definitely check her out at least, or at least when she clips those out, definitely watch those so you have an idea of what ballot initiatives are happening in the state. And as we've said, some of them can be really worded so that, you know, it could either be mostly for or against something, even though it might pose otherwise. Yeah. When so, I said, like, I'm done with the two-party system, I meant I was done with all of it. I don't care who comes oh. along. I don't care if Jesus comes down from the sky himself and says, Sabby, I'm running as a Democrat. I'd be like, bye. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that one in there for a but bit. Since when did you get that? <laughs> I've had since that one for a while. Um, <laughs> just don't have opportunities to use it occasionally. Wow. You know? oh, God. But, well, I think we might, that might come up. <laughs> a little more frequently now that we're in the crazy times of election season. Um, but anyway, um, so anyway, continuing with the Oracle, whenever I talk about this dynamic during a high profile election season, I am always inundated with a deluge of knee jerk point missers asking, well, who should we vote for then? Which uh -huh. is kind of so like we, Morpheus telling so Neo we, he's been living his whole life in the Matrix and Neo going, Okay, but how do I get my boss to give me a raise in the cu my cubicle job where I work? <laughs> it doesn't matter, Neo. The whole thing's an illusion. What matters is getting people to open their eyes to this reality so that meaningful action can be taken. If you're having a dream about being chased by a lynch mob, your only concern is making sure your own interests win out over the interests of the mob. When you wake up from the dream, you don't spend the rest of your day wondering how you're going to get away from the mob. You concern yourself with your real material interests in your waking life. That's what this should be like. If you really grasp what's being pointed to here, you won't keep getting swept up in the mass psychosis of the election seats and hysteria, and party politics won't have any gravitational pull on your mind. Instead, your focus will be on helping people to realize that this is all a carefully man man manufactured illusion because until enough of us are awake to the real world, there'll be no chance of using the power of our numbers to overthrow the tyrants who've been pulling the wool over our eyes this entire time. So, I mean, it's, I mean, as Carlin said, it's a big club and yeah. we certainly ain't the fuck in it. Are we, you know? No. So um, I, I think so... This, her big point is that like, look, none of these people have real power. They are figureheads. No. regardless of what you want them to you know like this is not 3d chess it's very easy there's a couple of people at the top if you follow the money and that is who really rules your shit as carlin put to us they own the land they own the you know like they own it it's theirs you have no power here and as i know caitlin johnstone is a fan of because she writes about it frequently Alan Watts is saying you can only control what you can control. That is what you have control right. over. So right. you got no power here. It's time to focus on other ways of enacting the things you want. Well, it's not to say we don't have power. We do. Not in that it's sense. That not electorally. Really, you know. Not electorally, no. But like, but that's where they get you. That's where they right. get us. And that's things the idea like now that even now that boycotting people, like you know, right. that well, has not real only effects. That, but it's just like for many, right. But for many people, like Gaza in particular was a red line for a lot of people. I know people who were uncommitted, like in the primary. I know someone in particular who wrote in Gaza where Biden, yeah. where you can bubble in Biden. And now that Kamala is in, they're like, I'm all in. Yeah. But Kamala is not doing, and we know this, we, and this has been reported by, uh, well, that's... colleagues in the space. Yeah, Kamala has it's proving not to do anything different on Gaza compared is, to what Biden this is, is the doing. Plan. And Trump, and don't go on like, well, Trump will be no, no, don't, don't try that game in terms of Trump. Like, yeah. right now, we've Trump heard that before. President. So, you know, so I mean, essentially, but, so they're really, trying to slip kind of young show... Hillary at you while you're not paying attention, and you're you're thankful that it's not Biden, not realizing. Because it's not Biden, everyone has to figure it out again. Everyone knew with Biden, you know, 
Right. Like now it's to the point where people got to learn themselves something over Kamala to pretty much she's worse, if not better. And all they got left is lesser evil nonsense, which I heard the other day and I forget who said it. Someone will tell me. But to think something is the lesser evil, it means you think that it's the same evil, but it affects you personally less. That is mm -hmm. pretty much what that means. So, yes. like, you know. Right. No, uh, that's no, that's what it is. It's it's your comfort. Like, yeah. what are you more comfortable with? What are right. you able to tolerate? Which more? is why they throw like, the identity Trump politics is, out Trump at you. For most people, you know, like for most you had that people, clip the other day. Tolerate Trump, and rightly so. But at the same time, it's like. What was You're it? You're able to stomach what the Democrats are able to do, which I would argue is a lot more furious and a lot more damaging because they do it very slowly and they do it often with you not realizing it. And then it's like, yeah, it's, I don't know. So it just feels kind of weird being, I think this is our first year essentially being, having this show in the midst of election season. So it's just been wild just to kind of see like it, almost just comical how people even in our space have jumped ship and just are like, oh, Kamala is good. Oh, Waltz is good. And like, I'm so I feel it, it was almost as if people were waiting for a reason they, to vote Democrat, they couldn't justify themselves. Well, you have to do it for Biden. You posted so, this the other day, which I thought was very poignant yeah. here. Of our blackness yeah. and our womanness are not in themselves trustworthy if we allow ourselves to be conscripted into positions of power that maintain the oppressive status quo. You know, um, Professor yeah. Ruben you know, Benjamin. Why, why you I, I, okay. Yeah. So she we. We featured this a few months ago, um, but I felt like I think this was, as I said I th in that tweet, I think some of you need a reminder yeah. of what she said, because, you know, there's a lot of information like with Kamala giving her race. I uh, got called out by people because of like, why are you focusing on our race? Why are you focusing on the policy? And it's like, well, we, we could do, do both. Have some of her policies we do have a record. Right. You know, given how she, with her, with her as a senator, with her as a attorney general, and as a prosecutor in California, it's not promising, especially for Black people. Which but I would say that's available. first of all, first of all, as the non melanated member of this show, y'all don't do that for my people. I'm gonna tell you right now. Like I know plenty of people who would argue that you're more than willing to focus on the race aspect of me first, and then my policy. You know, like there's plenty of you out there as well. Like we're like that dumb white boy, and I feel you. I feel you on that. But <laughs> like at the same time, like there was plenty of reasons to be mad at people other than that. You know, right. So so, and I think especially for black people who are familiar with Kamala's record, who yeah. are kind of running for the hills, and are kind of people telling people like please be careful and people just don't give a damn it's yeah it just reminds me of 2020 all over again and it's kind of like it's very frustrating it's very yeah it's just really frustrating to me that people have not learned anything from four years ago or even <laughs> no goldfish it's brains just, you know right it's just the idea of like you know you're you're looking for people to ultimately save you, but the idea is they haven't done anything that is worth you trusting them oh, to no. actually do the shit Mr. that they Superman want you to do. In, in no, it's here. Mr. Superman, he so, no here. That be, yeah. You know. Um, let's listen to what Dr. Benjamin is saying again, and yeah, we'll finish up. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Which, Professor, if you want to come talk, black proponents of Cop City in Atlanta's more ways leadership to get a hold class. Of us. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Just look at the black woman's hand, ambassador at the UN, voting against a ceasefire in Gaza. 
Can you pause there? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to talk about this, but this this phenomenon has been happening over the last 48 hours, I think, on Black Twitter especially. Like, and you ain't Black. There, there's something, some psyop going on regarding, like, <laughs> some TikTok. And I don't know, I don't know the full details, but I kind of know of it, but it just seems very stupid, like, how this came about. But essentially, like, there's some allegedly Palestinians, I guess, who were or, or allegedly saying anti-Black stuff. Uh-huh. And then, like, and we know, like, you know, the box kind of came in and, and elevated it to being, like, you know, to yeah, make Yeah, any it of that's going to get... Basically, yeah. Yep. Uh, but basically trying to create dissent among Black people and Palestinians in light of the genocide. Yes. And which to me is just kind of like stupid. Because... Yeah, because that, that doesn't work. It's it's the same thing with the LGBT thing, man. It's the same thing. They try to do that crap too, and it's just wrong. It's just Islamophobic right. wrongness. Like... Right, but it's like, and I was listening to Feeney who kind of mentioned this. She mentioned this in like on Twitter by TikTok. She mentioned like, even if Palestinians were anti-black, that doesn't excuse the fact that they're being genocided right now, mm -hmm. you know? And that also kind of relates to black people. Like we've talked about what Israel, how Israel is very much tied within the black community, especially yeah. given like with cop cities and all that kind of stuff. That's all Israel. So if you don't think that what's happening in Israel is not going to happen to black communities here, you're dead wrong. And look, I, I've gotten called out, especially when I did that um, panel with Savvy a couple of weeks ago. Like <laughs> every black it's... person called me everything but a child of God, basically being like, you're a tether, like go back to your country. You have no right. To but look, um, as I say, and I don't apologize, foreign policy is domestic policy. You need to know what's happening in the world <laughs> in order to figure out how that's well, going hey, to... Going back to your country is you. part of the Caribbean, you know, reparations. So I hate right. to be that guy, but like we all, brothers and sisters, could go back to our countries if given the opportunities right. to do so. So maybe fight for those. It, I don't know. All, I think it's all under the guise of like isolationist. I, I think uh, uh, Baraka said, I forgot the exact term he used, but it's like isolationist Negroism. Essentially, <laughs> like, that shit. like, it, like, but it's just the idea that your whole world is centered around America, uh -huh. and like, and like. You can only think in terms of the oppression that you experience. Like, bro, y'all got off, y'all got thrown off the boat a little quicker than the other ones. Like, it, it, t there's no difference. I'm sorry to tell you. No. Like, no. And, it, and, and you should be thinking, because we are now the, the globalists, it's a global problem, not like you should be thinking globally here. It is a global problem that affects yes. you. Like yes, that that little triangle went like all over the globe, like not not just like to America and back. It's not a line. It was a triangle, right? Like of the biggest ocean. Like y'all ended up in Asia. Like you know how this works, right? Like those boats went places. Like I just find it funny, dude. Every everyone that watched that knew you and Nico were like the only ones people could listen to. So as I think Nick said. Anyway, let yeah, anyway, let's um, That is our blackness and our womanness are not in themselves trustworthy. If we allow ourselves to be conscripted into positions of power that maintain like need... the oppressive status quo. Like, Our blackness and womanness are not themselves <laughs> yeah, you know trustworthy. 
if we support the yes. occupation of black neighborhoods with so-called better trained police, or remain silent about the genocide of oppressed peoples around the world funded by our tax dollars. And here, let me please shout out the incredible Spelman students and AUC siblings who have been organizing with Stop by Delta Kappa, especially and Justice in Palestine, <laughs> among know. many other troublemakers in this room. You all remind us that college is not a waiting room to enter the real world, but that you can start transforming that world right here, right now. Right here. It goes without saying, but let me just right say now. it anyway. For student activists speaking out courageously for Palestine and Congo and Haiti and to stop Cop City, they should not be threatened with expulsion, loss of scholarships, or, or have public safety called on them for protesting. Too often, our institutions celebrate student activists after they've graduated. even giving them honorary degrees. Yeah, what? so, you know, so the whole point, what Dr. Benjamin is saying is, Kamala, she's, well, she, I would just say anyone in government, any, anyone in positions of power, you know, your gender, race, anything as far as your identity in and of itself should not be the thing that people should be looking at. It's like, what are you doing? And I'll say this for Kamala, if you are a woman of color, what do you plan to do for people of color that elevates their experience yeah. in her case? Or just anyone in general, how are you going to use your power of influence to elevate those around you. If you're right. not doing that, then get the fuck out. You know, that's what you be, should be using your power for. Not getting like the feels because you can get the first black woman or the first Asian woman or the first, the, the first, I'm tired of like, right. oh, this can be the first. Well, anything. it's all, it's it's all like, PR stuff. It's, it's like, and this could be a whole segment within itself about, black language especially in and around hbcus you know of like yeah. speeches are a very particular thing it literally sounds like right. black preaching you know mm -hmm. like i'm sure that that's it's like when kamala shows up at hbcus you don't think she pulls out the you know extra syllables on stuff and no, you know well, she, kind of, she did that already with that right. when she did that a rally it's, with um, Megan Thee Stallion. Um, the you most know? amount the is, of code like, speak, uh, you know. Right. But that's the issue that people have with Kamala, is that race aside, she just comes off as inauthentic. It just yeah. comes off as... It's, it's hot sauce in her bag. To... It's the same thing. Right. It's literally the same thing. Right. Like... It, it comes off as you're trying to build into relationships it's that you don't necessarily have versus just be. Look at the just gaslight. You. So, you know, you don't necessarily need to highlight your womanness, your Asianness, your blackness, whatever. Just tell us what do you plan to do? Right. You know, and as of right now, she still ain't got no policy on her. Policy, I know. I know. Although, like, from what I read today, like, she's basically getting BlackRock folks to work on her um, economic policy, which is kind of like, right. So just it's basically like, more the same. Oh, y'all want policy decisions? Well, I'll fucking, here you go, dog. Like, here's BlackRock Vanguard's, like, handwritten request sheet. Jesus Christ. Right. It's like probably they're probably not even. It's probably going to be AI, dude. AI is probably going to do it. Gonna, they have an AI writer policy. They already have it I doing mean, their point, fucking campaign photos. You know, 
I mean, at at this point, I wouldn't put it past them to even do that. But uh, yeah, um, I saw NPR talking about that anyway. today. Where like they couldn't, you know, they had an expert come on and be like, "No, it actually matched the campaign." Like I've seen three or four of them go out. What do you mean? They are AI, like very clearly, you know. Like their people's faces are messed up, and there's hands with like extra things. They have uh, people holding up cell phones, recording video, and the screens are black. Like, uh, you know, tell me uh, something staged or funky or weird about it. Like, you know. But anyway, um, you're gonna say something about this? I take it. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, a child to Caitlin. You know, for our article, as always. Um, and as always, YouTube hates us, and they told us they hate us, and they're not going to push or promote our channel or shows at all. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, at least they kind of said it in that way, both vague. So, that being said, we really need your help and support in order to grow, but most importantly, to be able to continue this operation that we have. So, if you are interested in helping us, and by the way, we always say, you know, take care of your families, take care of your communities, take care of your personal stuff in regards to finances. We know is tough out here. Um, your likes, your shares, your subscriptions really are enough for us. But if you have some extra money that you care to send our way, you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen, or you can go to the link that you see on your screen or if you get all of those, you can either go to um, explanation point donate where you're able to get the link in the chat, or you can go in our description and get all the links of where you can support INN. Uh, please sh make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Um, we're trying to get to, well, you know, going to say 3K. As we said, YouTube is not promoting or pushing our shit. So, yeah. you know, so we want... We want to start growing, obviously, um, and that we've been doing pretty good. Able to, but yes, yeah, uh, but more people is always helpful. Um, so be sure to like and subscribe, and please share our stuff to fight the suppression, and make sure to leave a comment. We do read those, and we do respond to them, mm -hmm. uh, and help us get to. Well, you said free. Help us get to five k. Yeah, and thanks for watching.